Are you, What's up? What's going on? What's going on? Are you able to um turn your phone to landscape, babe? Oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, hold on. Let me. Can you see me properly? Hold on. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Oh, lighting's good on your. Oh, your lighting's popping. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how are you? How are you, baby? I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing really, really good. How are you? I'm. I'm all right. Not too bad. Um, this is probably the second time that I've woke up at like early. I'm never an early person, but uh, you're. My, the, you should have told me that. No, no, no. But I do it for you, baby. I do it for you. Oh. I do it for you, man. I've got no problem with that. You know, it's I'm workaholic anyway. So you know, if it means I got to get up to do something, then I'll do it. And I'm, I'm excited Love to that. chat to you again, man. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I actually had an intro for you if you want to hear it. Okay, I want to hear it. Right, okay. So imagine the scene, right? So it's like uh so it's like you got some romantic music going underneath. All right. So imagine that's going in your head. So <clears throat> Okay, let's get into mm -hmm. Well, Nori, I have to say you're always my favorite goodbye, but even more my favorite hello. Uh, I miss all your jokes. Um, so, so do you mind coming back to London to see me when flights lift? And I would love to take you out on a date. So where do we go from here? Yo, that was amazing. <laughs> Smooth, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, when they lift that van. <laughs> Smooth, isn't it? That was that was really good. Like, <laughs> if anybody flies into my DM like that, they got a date. <laughs> I well, I should have I should have done that instead of this <laughs> intro. Then. <laughs> no, but um, no, nah, but no. Nah, so I thought I, I thought I slide that to you before we start. You know, get get ourselves love that. going. Love it. Love. Um, love it. Um, so <laughs> how? I mean, how have the past couple of months been for you? Because you know the deal already by now. Like everyone knows, like this is a crazy time yeah. we're living in. So what? You know how you how have you been keeping? Like how how mentally have you been able to keep through all of this? Um, it's been pretty pretty crazy. It's very very obviously very different than what anybody is used to, especially me being in you know, studio environments and being around people 24 seven, it's, it's so crazy different. Mm. And everything just moved to zoom sessions, FaceTime sessions. So it was, it was hard to adjust to, but that was the only option. So it's kind of like, you just had to do what you got to do. Like, that's it. Mm. So I feel like my mentality with all of that was just the work's got to be done. It's got to be done this way. So just try to figure out to figure out how to get used to it basically it, it's, it's like it's having tough, to like, it's like having to readjust to everything you know as everyone in the whole world yeah. has had to do yeah you know? like it just <laughs> literally so that's kind of how i went into it and that's how i kind of managed everything and um you know i just did my studio sessions through facetime or zoom and my meetings through zoom which i still do through zoom so it's like this, this is what I'm used to now. So as soon as I see somebody in person now, it's going to be like, what? No, nah, you what know what? It, it, it feels weird, but like, obviously, you know, we've come out of, or on our side anyway, like we've lifted a lot out of lockdown, but now some parts really? of the country have been reimposed as far as lockdowns. Like we heard in uh, Aberdeen in Scotland, they're reimposing some of the lockdown restrictions where, you know, on our side, we're calling cool London for now, but it's kind of weird not seeing as many people as, you know what I mean? Like, was, everyone's slowly coming back out now, but it's still a bit weird mm -hmm. with everything, like with the face mask and and hand sanitizing, going into shops and whatever, but yeah. it's it's weird, like, but, you know, we're, we're just in a new phase right now, I feel. Like, how's ever, how are things in New Zealand on your end? Yeah, in New Zealand, we've actually gone back to normal. So, like, right. everything's it's like COVID never existed here. Like that's how it feels. It's like we never went through anything. Cause over here we went through phase, like we went into level four lockdown straight away. So just to like really get that shit. Um, 
over with and <laughs> that's kind of what happened <laughs> yeah like, because I, I, I yeah. was hearing on the news that um like you guys were just on it in terms of getting everything sorted like not to get into everything political because there's so much to talk yeah, about yeah, but yeah. it but it just sounds like you were on you guys were on it it seems everything's cool and we're still having to deal with like it seems that we were late in everything in terms of like having to put certain things on and now it's just like <sighs> all right long <laughs> yeah it, it... It, it does. It seems like the rest of the world kind of were like, is it really going to be that bad? Like, I feel like that's kind of how it was um, treated. Mm. But over here, they just we took it so seriously that because I was actually in London in March. Mm. And I, I was, was going to ask separate. you. Yeah. So you were over here just like so because I knew I wasn't tripping because I've seen <laughs> some of your stories that you were in London. And then yeah. weren't you struggling to come, go back to New Zealand? Like, yeah, at one point? I, I was stuck. I was stuck in London. Um, I should have called you. <laughs> I <was laughs> yeah, you should, you should have. Yeah, uh, that's how you much you care about me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I was stuck there and I, I kind of was just like trying to figure out a way to get back to New Zealand. And New Zealand was just like, everybody that's from New Zealand, you have to come back now before it's too late, before we shut the borders on you. And I'm just like, oh my God. Uh -oh. And there was only one flight out and it was so expensive, but yeah. that's the only flight I could take out. And I made it back safely and I had to do a two week quarantine and I couldn't mm. see my family for two weeks, oh, but man. thank God for FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty insane. Well, Same I mean, time. I mean, it sounds like it's, you know, it's business as usual for you now. So you're kind of on a nice flex. You're, you know, I mean, do you, do you, do you go back to, do you go back to, well, I mean, you haven't at the moment, like, but I know you were back and forth in LA, like from last year, weren't you? Yeah. So like, yeah, constantly be back and forth, LA, New mm. Zealand, LA, New Zealand. So now oh, it's just. I know it's pretty crazy over there and I haven't mm. been back since December. Um, but I'm planning to go back in the next couple <laughs> <Yeah>. weeks. <laughs> okay. As crazy as that sounds, like anybody is going to call me crazy, but I have to do, like, I have to go and like record. I have to, you know, there's work to be done. So it's, no, it has to, it's got to be done, to man. Do. Like it's, it's just, there's going to be a two week quarantine. So it's not mm. going to be, um, like I'm just going in and I'm coming from a place that's no COVID. So it's yeah, just really sense. the only risk factor is the traveling. So, yeah. Well, speaking of traveling, like, I know last year when I first met you, um, you know, you said that you were excited to go to Dubai uh, and you actually yeah. went, like, how was that experience for you? Yeah, I went twice actually. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So you just, you just went, oh yeah, yeah, I'll go again. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, because... So the first time I went, it was during my, um, it was during Favourite Goodbye release. And that's when I was in London first. Um, that's right. Yeah. So I went from London to Dubai and that was amazing. You know, we did promo over there and it was great. I love Dubai. I love it. I love it just as much as I love London and I'm into Manchester, just as much as I love all those places. It was just so crazy because it was my first time for all of those places in one go. So it was just such an amazing experience and did, I can't wait to come back. Did you, did you feel like with traveling to those places for the first time? Cause like, what it sounds like is like, you know, you came to London for the first time and then you went to Dubai for the first time. Like I'm, I'm assuming yeah. that you just take every experience in traveling as like, wow, this is amazing. Like knowing that this is my first time going over. Yeah. It's just, to, I'm so fascinated by new places as well. Mm. And I'm just like, Oh my God. Like, because my sisters and everything, everyone in my family has traveled to these places before, but I haven't because of the second studio. So yeah. it's like the first time I get to do it. And I always knew I wanted to do it through music. I didn't want to just travel for the sake of traveling because I was mm. just so busy. So I was like, when I travel, it's going to be through music. And it's literally how it happened. So mm. just being there for music and just being able to experience a new place for the first time is just such a cool experience. Aww. And it's just so beautiful because it's so different from like, what I'm used to, so it's it's amazing. I think I take that as well because I haven't done as much traveling as I thought I would as well. So you know, it's definitely something. And and before we get before we get into you know your new single, do you mind? Um, if I were to come to New Zealand because I've never been, is there any particular places I should go? Like pick me as a basic tourist. Like what should I do? You know, to make my stay, you know, I mean memorable. Oh God. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would go 
I would go to the Sky Tower, which is, you know, our tall building that we have in Auckland, which you can jump off that if you're not scared of heights. I'm terrified of heights. I would never, oh, ever wow. do it. You can jump off and it's like literally in the sky. Wow. Um, yeah, you can do that. You can jump off the Harbour Bridge. We have a Harbour Bridge. It's like the most beautiful view. A place I would recommend to go to is Queenstown, which is in the South Island. And okay. it's so beautiful. Like, it's like you're walking into a picture, literally. Like, okay. I'm from New Zealand. And for me to say that, it's like I'm used to the beautiful scenery. But Queenstown is just a whole different level. Mm. Um, I would go to Wellington because Wellington, if you're a fan of um, Lord of the Rings, um, that's where they filmed it. My I would go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'll go there. It's just like those types of places that I know of. <laughs> wow. I know I've lived here for all my life. Well, yeah. if I ever get a chance to come to New Zealand, uh, hopefully, you know, flights lift again, then I'm coming to you. I'm going to DM you or call you or whatever it is. And I'm going to say, look, come pick me up. We're going to, you know, be my tour guide. Let's do this. Easy. Yeah. All right. Easy. 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 I'll, I'll do Let's the same. Do I'll, do the, I'll do the same with you. If flights lift again, if you come back to London, then I'll take you to some places that you might not have, yes. mi- that you might have missed. Yay! All right, that would cool. be so amazing. All right, cool. We'll DM. I'm actually I'm... serious. I'm gonna take you up on that offer. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you up on your offer as well. Like seriously, so <laughs> we'll DM. We'll, we'll DM afterwards. Um, so let, let, like, let's talk about your single. Do you mind? Uh, you know, yeah. new single is out there at the moment. Um, firstly, I wanted to say, I wish, I wish I was your man that was in the video. I'll, I will say that first of all. I mean, I might not, I, I might not have the packs. I might not have the, you know, the Dell toys or whatever. But I would probably, I probably would make you laugh much more. I would probably reckon. But you know, what I mean, I'll probably just bring something different, you know. But, um, but what I get, what I get from the video is that you know, obviously your car breaks down, and um, you know, this guy comes out and fixes your car, and then you fantasize about the idea of what would to happen, like if you were together. Is that, is that the vibe that you was going with when you made the song? Yes, I'm so glad that you got it because I didn't know if people were going to get it the way I had planned it out. No, nah, I think but it was simple for me. Thing. I, I kind of knew the simple philosophy of the video. I kind of got where it was getting to. I thought, yeah, okay, I see where she's going. So guy, pick, <laughs> guy, guy picks a fix the car, all of that, yeah. Perfect, yeah. That was literally the whole, you know, that was the whole part of the story was my car breaks down. Um, a hot guy comes over and he tries to fix my car and I fantasize about what a summer romance would be with him. Okay. And then, you know, that's the whole video is me fantasizing about what it would be like to have like the summer fling with this guy. And at the end, he eventually fixes my car and like drives off. So it was just all in my head. And, then, and it was just literally towards the end when you looked at it for like, oh, <laughs> I wish you, right. I wish it was real. <laughs> Is he really just gonna leave me here? <laughs> nah, standard. Like, did you did you shoot the video before lockdown was re- imposed, or was it during lockdown? Like, or during at, like, when was the video no, shot? No, it was after lockdown. Right, it was after lockdown. Yeah, so you know the ban here got lifted, so we were able to move around, um, okay. thankfully. And we just put that idea together within a week, and then a week later we were shooting it. So yeah, and the video the video was <laughs> sick because you know it's pretty straightforward as a story. And like you know, when when I get stories from videos, it's like you know if I could pick it up straight away, then I kind of know where it's going. So it's like I appreciate Yay. that those videos made sense because sometimes when I look at some videos, it's like what the fuck's going on here? I don't see it's jumping I from know. bit to bit. Do you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Um, is that the philosophy when it comes to, you know, making videos and songs? It's like, you know, it's relative to people that are going through similar experiences to you? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I always just want my videos to kind of uh, represent the song. Like, I know some videos won't have anything to do with the song. Sometimes mm. it, it just pans out like that. But, but with my videos, especially at the beginning stage, I just like being able to follow a story because i feel like mm. you follow the lyrics you feel the lyrics i want you to feel the video as well mm. it's just yeah, yeah. I, I love that and of course That's you did, I... of course you did the do you mind challenge as well uh you know yeah. and and you had a, a and you had some kids that re- replied to it as well uh with their videos you they must... actually they started it oh really yeah they oh came okay with the whole dance yeah, so they told me i was like oh okay so this is the dance then okay i'm, you know, I'm gonna practice now you yeah, were so you were so funny in your IG video. Was it was it please tell me, was it set up that you 
when you when you actually did like uh, what it, the the dance like the first time, did you actually fall or was it just set up? I actually fell, and you know why? Because one, <laughs> the ground was wet. Two, my laces were getting undone while I was trying to practice, <laughs> and my shoes were so slippery. And it was so funny because my sister was controlling the camera. So right. as she saw that I was falling, she didn't even try to touch the camera. She was like, oh, no, we're just going to keep rolling. Like, she didn't try to help me up. I'm like, I literally <laughs> fell. Like, I cut the video short, too. It was so funny because as I got up, I was like, oh, my God. And, like, my whole knee was, like, gone. <laughs> it, it could have been that your knee was broken or, you know, blood all over the place. But your sister's like, no, we're keeping the shot. Let's go. Keep rolling, and I was like, you know, it's true entertainment right there. No, straight, straight up. And and what I truly, what I truly like about you, and this is evident from when I first met you, like even from when I came into the room and I first met you, like this is evident that Aww. you are you are fun. You know, you're not afraid to be goofy. You know, you you allow yourself to bring your true side. And the thing is, it's like you know, a lot of you know, a lot of artists they have this like persona. They want to keep like a. Uh, you know, sort of like a, an image intact, if you will. And but yeah. in your case, it's like you don't give a fuck about that. You just want to be f unapologetically you, and that's what I love about you. I love that description. I really do love that description because that's how I feel. I'm just mm. like, I don't care about being um, myself. Mm. Like I, that's I I am I'm literally how I am on my story. That's how I am in person, if not ten times worse. But like. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> That's just me. And I feel like if if I'm able to be myself on my story and on like in front of everybody, I feel like that might encourage the next person to be like, hey, she's allowing herself to be goofy and she doesn't take herself that seriously. Maybe mm. I can do that too. And I, I, don't, I think that the best version of everybody is when they don't take themselves so seriously because Instagram's becoming so serious. And I'm just mm. like... I'm tired of that. I'm just like, I can't be bothered. I, yeah. I Honestly, it comes down to me not being bothered. So yeah, 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 and I hear you. Because yeah, you see on my story, I'm just like, I've just given up. I'm just like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> this is me. Because like, it, it, it. it's funny because you literally like answered what I was going to ask you. But like, obviously, you know, with a lot of people that they're maintaining a certain image, uh, do, do, do you feel, I, I, I'm assuming it's a no, but do you feel that there's any pressure, like, especially with, you know, females where they have to project themselves in a certain way. Like I've got to stick my butt out, make my legs pop out. And you know what I mean? And you know what I mean? All, all of that stuff and make sure my makeup is all tight and everything. And you know what I mean? And just show that all, all of that stuff. Do you like, do you feel that there's any pressure in social media to project yourself in a certain way to cater to, you know, say what, whether it be a male or some sometimes female audiences? Yes, I feel like there is like a pressure to a certain extent but I feel like it all starts with you and like how you think of yourself and how you want to be validated like I don't feel like I need a I need everybody to validate who I am I'm showing you who I am you're not it's not the other way around where I feel like some people who see that pressure see it the other way around whereas they need to be validated by everybody else so they're doing what they think they're gonna like mm. and that's just not me. I'm not the person that's going to stick my ass out on my Instagram or show my cleavage or whatever it is. I don't need, I don't need to do that. Like, because I don't feel like I owe that to anybody. One, you know, I like, I'm an artist at the end of the day, you're not there to see my shit. And it's like, I don't know. I just don't need that validation. I feel like yeah. I'm very secure in myself. Um, and the people around me keep me very, um, confident and self-aware and you know I just wouldn't at the end you know what it is I yeah. can never make <laughs> my mom it, it, I, I wouldn't post something that I, I wouldn't want my mom to see basically right gotcha like yeah and, and, and but it does come down to the whole validation thing because I, I really don't need any validation it's like I'm just being who I am and yeah. you like it you like it you don't you don't it's just and, that, and and honestly that's what makes you more attractive uh you know not just not just for me personally because I know like you know I mean you're attracted to me anyway but I mean <laughs> it as a whole because like you know you don't have to prove yourself in terms of oh I've got to do this to to make it or whatever it is like you're doing yeah. it just being authentic in just being you like the way you are so i, I appreciate yeah. that you're continuing that momentum so you know and there's Thank no bullshit you. with it you know no there's no bullshit at all and none it's, it's really it's, 
you're gonna come to my page and this is real it's um this is gonna get you're just gonna that, see me that's like, it yeah, and and and, and speaking of your attractiveness uh you know uh I, I saw like back in june that you did a photo shoot and i and the first thing i was thinking to myself like damn how did you get your body well toned like, like, how, oh, how, like, your body's like well toned. Like, I can see. Like, do you do you gym or do you, do you? You know, what I mean, do you go to the gym? Do you do you work yourself out? Like, yeah, I have to. Like, mm. for me, I've always been very, very active, and I've been into sports. And you know, I like, I like sports. Like, I like to be active. I mm. like to go to the gym and things like that. Obviously, there's days where I hate hate it but like yeah me too. i think as soon as i came back from <laughs> i've always been active mm. um i like being you know I, I like playing sports so i feel like that's where it comes from maybe but yeah. you know at times i do need a diet because i eat whatever i want sometimes and it's just like not good <laughs> <laughs> well um well, this is better than what I'm doing, which is literally uh, barely any gym and eating what I want as well. So I probably need a bit of motivation. So yeah, again, I call my... it I call it a balanced diet. So you eat right. whatever you want and you go to the gym and you just stay the same. It's like you're yeah, fine. yeah. I kind of fluctuate <laughs> on my side anyway, so it's not. I don't. I, I gain, but I also lose. So it's not like I'm going too far out. But I guess yeah. in one way yeah. or the other. So. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's the best way to go about it. But when I do gym, I gym very, very hard. Like, I don't right. joke around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I might need that motivation. So, again, if I travel <laughs> over there, then, okay, then you, then I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll, teach you, I'll teach you everything. You're going to want to go back to London, like, the next day. <laughs> I, I, I'll be like, listen, where's my next flight? Uh, I'm going to pay for my next flight. Like, I've, I've got my last bit of savings. Take me home. Take me home. No, <laughs> <laughs> now I, I, I see I, I see that you're back on the New Zealand's chart um you know miss all your jokes yes. came at number one uh congratulations on that Thank um you. you know again like with when when you get these accolades in terms of like reaching like top numbers in the charts like like do, do you always send, get a feeling of like excitement in terms of like I need to push myself more in terms of you know making sure a song is a a pop chart or do you just go by with your heart when you whenever you make a song now i just go with what i love so it's i love something like miss all your jokes i teased i think a year before i released it and just seeing how much love it got because i loved it so much and i got you know mixed reviews about it from other people so i was just like i love it so mm. at the end of the day that's literally all that matters to me and I, like how i felt at that moment that's why i wrote it and i was just like i teased it and it got a better reaction than the first two songs so i was just like hmm maybe i'm just gonna go with my gut like i have been mm. and i just released it and i was like you know what the fans want it so i'm gonna give it to them and that's what it was and then just seeing how it did i was just it kind of confirmed for me that mm. my gut always tells me the truth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, I'm just gonna go with my gut all the time. You're, I'm gonna take your opinions. I'm gonna stole them. I'm gonna, you know, it's just what it is. Mm. And I'm just gonna go with what I think. And you know, Miss All Your Jokes wasn't a single, but I always want to make sure that I put visuals to every song that I put out just because I love visuals and mm. I feel like people love visuals. Like people want to see something. Mm. And that was such an emotional song for me that I feel like simplicity was key for that one. And we would, we did film that during lockdown and it was hard. So I was just like, it was like, you're limited to everything. And my brother-in-law actually shot it. And it was, you know what? The funniest thing was, we didn't have anything to shoot this video. Really? And nothing. We were just in the studio that I rented out for like $80. I swear, this was like an $80 budget. For like the studio for $80. And my brother-in-law was sitting on this chair that was like a rolly chair. And yeah. my sister was behind him like moving it forward like slowly to even capture like... Oh, so like, like, a, like a dolly. Like the, the, like the dolly equipment yeah yes like so we literally i i have to actually post that because it's the funniest video because <laughs> you see her just pushing this chair oh wow and i'm supposed to stay so serious because i'm like it's such an emotional song so it's like the first two takes i died laughing i was like i can't do this i can't i can't i, can't, I don't blame take, you <laughs> the third take i had to just think of like obviously my situation and it's just something so sad that 
it ended up being the video but that's literally what we had to work with like my sister wow. was pushing this chair it was crazy but yeah i just but you know what i love that the most like i love being that creative that you have to do those types of things to even get the type of shot that you want or the visual that you end up with i just love these types of um situations that we kind of get ourselves into like, you know, oh, know. So, so so it's I like love... di it's like diy and just being authentic with everything so it's like you know all yes. the videos you do it's like you know I mean, yeah, you could get to a point of like, say, you know, like a like a like a, a big budget and big productions and stuff like that, which you know, I'm you know, it may get to you know, likely get to later on for you, but like you know, yeah. you're enjoying the moment of you know doing it yourself and you know getting it out there and and the productions are sick as well anyway, so you know, what right, I mean? right, a hundred percent. I just know that by doing all of this it just teaches me that anything is possible like even with a zero dollar budget anything you are able literally to do it's just mm. your mind and how you create it and it coming to life and i feel like we've really grasped how to do that like grassroots from like for, from the from from yeah. the core and like bring it up and stuff um yeah and you know I, d I just wanted to fill the gaps you know between you know when we last met till this point uh, and there's quite a lot that you did. Um, you know, you got to meet Sweetie uh, last oh, yeah. year. Um, you you got to go to the LA Dodgers uh, LA Dodgers Stadium. That must have been amazing. Yeah. Um, amazing. You got your merch out. Um, you know mm -hmm. that that you know I mean well done for that as well. Um, you. And you did recently that you did a project for Tidal uh, for their living room sessions as well. Um, so, you know, tell us in brief, like, you know, those experiences and like, you know, like how you enjoyed them, how you took them and things like that. Yeah. Well, sweetie, she's an amazing girl. I met her at, um, her manager's birthday party. So that was how that all happened. And, you know, it was great. It was like a good, great time. Um, I'm really, really good friends with Adam, Adam Small. Shout out to him. He's amazing. Okay. Uh, it was his birthday, and he managed a sweetie, and look at her go, like, amazing. She's, She's doing, doing so really, well. Really good. Yeah. Amazingly well. Um, and that was that. She's a lovely girl. Um, the Dodgers, oh, my God. <laughs> so I actually got to sing the national anthem at oh the Dodgers Oh, my gosh. Stadium. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So that was really – I was actually just working on the BTS, like, the other day, and it was just so – crazy because when i was like 18 i was in la and i actually bought this la dodgers ball for no random reason it was just like a souvenir that i wanted and i got it and i put it in my room and i came back to new zealand and i don't know something just connected me with this ball and it's crazy how like at that time they asked me if i wanted to do the national anthem for the dodgers and wow it just made me remember that time and i was just like wow how crazy some things just come so full circle and that was just such an amazing an amazing experience and i was just so glad and you know grateful that i was able to do that and i was asked to do that so <laughs> it was crazy um and we got to watch the game afterwards, so it was really, really cool. Oh man! Um, did you did you watch from uh, like uh, the v was there like a VIP section? I don't know what the term is yeah. called. Yeah, yes. So it was really hot that day, so they were like, "Oh, here's your VIP seats," <sighs> and I was like, "Oh, it's like a hundred degrees out here. Can you please give us some shade? Like, I'd rather sit <laughs> up at the top." That that that's the <laughs> only like, diva moment you're gonna have. Like, I can see it's just like, no, it's too hot. <laughs> Get me up here, girl. <laughs> Right. I was just like, I'll give these seats to somebody else. Like if somebody right. else wants to take these seats, I'll like go into the shade just oh, because bless I was just like, no, nah. it's like boiling. Mm. And so we we're just up at the top with everybody else. And it was just amazing. And I love that more because I love going to games yeah. and you're in it. Like you're yeah, really, really yeah, in yeah, it. You're yeah. not in like the conference room or whatever. We got to eat their food, which was amazing. But well, of course. you know, you can come back down. <laughs> <laughs> you could come back down and like just be in it and that's what I loved um so that was such an amazing experience I'll never ever forget it and honestly I'll do that a hundred times if they let me oh, um yeah no that was really really cool um and then the merch the title uh, oh, the merch. yeah, yeah we'll pull, do oh, the yeah. merch first yeah yeah no the merch amazing um I just wanted to do it simple this round as well because you know, a lot of people were asking for it. So I was just like, oh, I really need to like get something out. So that's kind of what we did. 
and I kind of re-released it this time around to include Do You Mind and just like a limited edition t-shirt for where do we go from here? Are you looking to like incorporate more before. of the merch like as you do more songs or is it just a thing of like, 100%. you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just doing it as I'm going um, and then slowly I'm going to be actually incorporating kind of my style into it. So mm. it's not just going to be regular merch, like hoodie, t-shirt, whatever. This is going to be kind of like what I would wear. Um, my bad. That's a, it's fine. Everyone's okay. done that. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Because it, it's just 20% I'm left with. Um, my phone is like pretty bad. Um, and then, and yeah, so I'm trying to incorporate my own style to kind of, push the merch and um i don't know it just might be something people like yeah I I, it's like trial and error with me yeah like, so you do, you do, you're doing you things as you're going along yeah yeah because you never know what's gonna stick what's not so it's just like and it's great to trial and error i think it's just and it's like, a learning curve as well know, so you know like, what works and what doesn't work yeah and you want to include your fans in it too so it's just True. like what are you guys like so it's like True. I like to include them in a lot of things, including my song. Definitely. Um, and the title and stuff? <laughs> the title stuff, amazing. So I actually did like a living room sessions um, video with them. And that's going to be up very soon. Um, I think in a week should be up. And okay. I just did like a cover of, you know, my song and a cover of <coughs> Chris Brown, Go Crazy, which oh, oh that's God, a like one song. of my favorite songs right now. That's a sick so song. dope. Yeah, it needs so, so all dope. the attention it, like, it's getting. Like, yeah. I love that song. Did Tidal get in Amazing. touch with you to say that, that you know we want to feature as, like artists like yourself to to be involved? Like how did that work? Um, well, I had a previous relationship with them from the other songs. Right. So it was basically it was kind of easy. That was just an email, like, oh, okay, you guys are doing this. Yeah, let's collaborate. It was kind of like that okay um and yeah. i wanted to I wanted very supportive to, they are oh no well I, I, I could definitely gather like you know like you know on the top yeah. of your page and um you know they're very <laughs> very supportive of new you know new talent as well i've noticed so they're really like 100%. trying to push that barrier you know what i mean and getting new talent out sure. in the surface 100%. You, you know, I know um and i wanted to uh get your thoughts on a few things just to be on a serious note for a second and then i've got some fan questions because the you know the fan questions have been creeping in like mad and i i appreciate <laughs> i appreciate you reposted the uh, ig story yesterday so thank of you course, so much for that yes. um yeah but um i wanted to ask uh with your thoughts on um everything that's going on right now with you know you went on the BLM protest in um, New Zealand, um, you know, New, Ze New Zealand's been all over the news, um, you know, and you were active on the streets to promote this. And with everything going on in the world right now, you know, COVID, BLM, speaking out, all of those sort of things, how, how in any way have they affected you? And, you know, what do you, what, what do you reckon we need to, 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 to gain full equality for the full fight going forward? It's so important, like, this whole movement is mm. so important. And I feel like it's just been shoved under the rug for so long. And, you know, people have been uncomfortable to talk about it, or, you know, they don't know what's right, or what's wrong, and think if they say something, they're wrong, or literally, it's just based off of fear of not knowing how to move forward. I feel like that's how everybody's mindsets have been up until this point, where we're finally actually doing actively doing something about it and um mm -hmm. getting it out there and i feel like finally i was about to swear but like fucking no you finally. could you could you like, could do it it's fine okay <laughs> i don't know if i'm allowed to swear but oh my god like finally like something's actually happening and you know cases that have just been shoved under the rug as well it's like cases i don't even know about that mm. are like showing up and i'm just like how has this just been like shoved to the side? Uh, it, it's just literally mind boggles me because I'm just, anyway, it, it's just so mm. annoying to me that, that it's taken this long <clears throat> and, you know, it's based off of fear. That's what I feel like personally has been based off of fear. Everybody's been moving forward with fear. And now that one person has spoken about it, they're like, okay, now I can talk about it. Now I can talk about it. And it's like a domino effect. And I feel like moving forward, everybody has to still 
speak about it to make sure that other people as crazy as it is it's literally like people follow other people so it's mm. if one person's doing it they feel like they're okay to do it so i feel like the more people speaking up about it and continuously mm. speaking up about it that's how we're going to really get into these people's heads to be like yeah. we're not going to forget about it just because like one day we were talking about it and the next day we're not talking about it yeah no we're going to continuously keep talking about it and yeah. you have to change and that's just what it is and it's crazy because some people's mindsets are really crazy <laughs> like, fu- yeah some are fucked to- up let's be real <laughs> it's actually effed up and i'm just like it's so simple the mm. solution is so simple it's just mm. equality like that's yeah. all it is you know we give it to all, all these <clears> other <throat> things but why not race like yeah it's so weird to me and it i think it's so a crazy. mental thing as well where it's like you know it is um you know hundreds of thousands of years of like a, a mentality that's stuck for you know even till now and i just think that um you're right you were saying about it's not just a thing where it's just one day and then we stop like we have to continuously talk about it and let people know that there's uncomfortability in it and it has to be said because if it just stops then i mean unfortunately there's still all this shit going on in terms of brutalities and you know police matters and stuff like that and it's still going on now like even past like you know the the first wave of protests that happened and it's just like it's a mental state so i think you know people need to be re-educated i feel uh and i think it starts with kids being in school as well and having all those i was literally yes i was literally just gonna say that it does start with kids and before kids even enter the world it's this they see each other as equal until something's been taught to them so it's that's literally as soon as they've been spoken to wherever it is whether it's in their household or whether it's school or whether it's from a friend or whatever, Mm. that's literally where it starts. So it can be people need to be re-educated on all of that Mm. to be like, that's not okay. Like whoever told you that was okay, it's not okay. So it literally literally, that's what it needs to happen is everybody needs to be re-educated and just have childlike minds again, but just know what the hell yeah exactly and um and and just one one final note as well on this uh i you know I, i'm really really sorry to hear as well that uh the other day with uh Barrett, um lebanon um and i know you've been active in speaking about it because it's close to your heart and i know there's a lot of uh, yeah. kurds that are living in uh, lebanon as well i'm really sorry to hear all of that sort of stuff and i i said the other day this is a really fucked up world like what is going on like why are things constant like this so it must have really hit home for you for that yeah 100 percent. like it hit home for me more because i have friends that are actually from there and their families and things like that so it was just it's just so so crazy like just seeing those videos just makes me feel like i know those people Mm. like and it's you know they haven't been treated fairly for a long 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 time so it's just like another thing added to it and it's who knows like it's probably gonna die down in like a week and that's what i hate about things that happen like tragedies that happen because they just die down and then it's like we're, we're still going through this like even though you've moved on, we're still going through this. So that's the part that I struggle with. And I'm just like, how do we get people to still care and mm. like, to like really give a shit or do something, actively do something about it. So it's, it's that part that I struggle with and I'm trying to really uh, do something about that, that medium part where it's, it's not the viral part and it's not the, um, the ending of it. It's just the middle of how to continuously help and Mm. kind of voice what's still continuously happening to me being a refugee they're still refugees like that's the part that i struggle with so it's you know i'm talking to people right now um trying to collaborate and actually actively try to continuously do something in any way i can possible yeah and and i and i I believe it's also like a a nationwide media narrative that's been put out as well like i don't want to get too political into it but i believe that there is like a certain extent like when i watch news like you know there's bits that are talked about and then all of a sudden like a week later like you said it's brushed under the carpet something else is talked about but then there are things outside of the news that you know, Yemen, for example, that's not talked about on the mm. news. And, you exactly, know, it's, my it, point. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So I, 
it, it's a good thing with social media that there are certain things that are surfaced that you know the nationwide media are not really bringing out about but i hope yeah. uh that you know a lot of those things are not only talked about but also like people are active in uh you know helping those people out or you know doing what they can to to to, to let it be known look we're not just going to take the narrative of what you're saying we're seeing what's going on so we need to like you know put our uh, efforts in and stuff like that man but um yeah <laughs> uh and on a much lighter note uh you know let's bring the, let's bring the positivity back up again let's bring yes. it up let's bring it bring up it because we've got some we've got i've got some fun for you in a minute uh so on a lighter note, okay. uh, of course, uh, yeah, of course, uh, do you mind? It's out now. Um, I would normally say, you know, what's the rest of 2020 looking like for you? But obviously, you know, travels are still kind of a bit iffy at the moment. But what are you looking to do next? What's what's up? What's up? What's up? Tell me. What's up? Okay. Um, well, I'm planning on still because I've just been releasing single, single, singles. And yep. I feel like that's kind of been working. And I feel like people's attention span is like this tiny. So mm. <laughs> I feel like that's how to go right now, especially during this pandemic. Um, I do want to release an EP and that's what we're working on right now. Uh, and while I do that as well, I'm planning on recording more songs for the next, next EP. <laughs> so it's nice. A lot of work, a lot of a lot of work, because and I want visuals to each song. So can nice. you imagine? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, saying, a lot of work. But you're a hard worker anyway, so uh, you're gonna do it anyway. I, I love know. it. Yep. Yeah, 100%. man. All right, so you know, there's two more bits before I let you go. So I've got fan questions okay. first for you. Um, like I said okay. again, appreciate you know you reposting the IG story. So thank you. Um, yeah. So the first one it comes from Nori dot underscore dot fans. Uh, there's three oh. parts to there's three parts to this question. Um, okay. So number one, he says, "Do you really care about your fans?" And it's obvious to say, "Yes, you do." A hundred percent. You know what's funny is that fan account always messages me that. <laughs> So well, when, like, well, it's out there I for you do. to hear now. So, yeah. 100%. I love my fans. I do everything. Yeah. And he says, uh, it says, do you know your super fan? His name is Hammer. I hope I said it correctly. He said he has a fan page about you because uh, you just mentioned that he does. Um, and then the third <laughs> one is uh, do you, from him. Uh, do you have Snapchat? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's funny. It's like I literally get these direct DMs. Um, I have Snapchat, but I don't use it. Right. Well, yeah, I mean... it's just like I, I don't use it. Like, if you were to add me, I'll never know because I don't use it. <laughs> well, I just delete the app. To well, Hama. Well, you know now that she doesn't have Snapchat, but you can always like <laughs> keep up to date with her on the IG. So you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, next mm-hmm. one I got is from uh, Lawin Rashid ninety six. I hope I said it correctly. Uh, mm-hmm. So he says, "BG Nori." Is that is that is that hello in Kurdish? Kurdish, yeah. Okay, because I was trying to figure out what that was. It's like, you know, so BG Nori, uh, he says, for your Kurdish fans in the UK, after all the virus is done, could we be seeing you live here? Oh, <laughs> in London or the UK? It, I mean, he didn't say London, he just said the UK in general. You know what? I spent enough time there to be like, I could live... I could, I could do that because I was there for a long time and I was there by myself, especially in March and I was just doing everything myself and I had to get around and blah, blah. So it was just like, I was like, I could actually like see myself actually living here. Cause it, it reminds me of New Zealand too. So it was like, okay. I was kind of used to like the whole vibe and area and it was just cool. Okay. I loved it. And uh, he, part of his question is as well, is there ever a chance you could record a song in Kurdish? A hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, because I remember we were speaking right about it before. Yeah, I'm waiting for the right opportunity with that one. Um, you know, and, and uh, waiting for a right point um, in my career as well for that opportunity. So I, I really want to make that one massive. So I'm waiting for the right one. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Next one's from um, Abba Ahmed. One. Uh, he just literally said, "I fucking love her." Oh, I love you. Me too. So yeah, big up yourself. Uh, 
<laughs> Keishan12, uh, I hope I said it right. <laughs> Whose voice yeah. is at the beginning of Miss All Your Jokes video? <laughs> um. I don't know what that means, but... Oh, because there was the voice in like the beginning of the uh, the video. <laughs> it's basically about the person that the song's about. Right. The voice okay. is about the it's about him. Right. Okay. Was, I just used his voice in the beginning, and it was a whole thing. <laughs> Okay, 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 <laughs> all right, all right. Then. <laughs> Shots fired straight from the gate. Okay. Um, but but yeah, he yeah. knew it was about him. Yeah. It's funny. F fair. And he recognized his own voice, which is funny. <laughs> did, he, did he come back to you and so say, like, why are you using my voice for? No, he was just like, I forgot what he said. I think he said something like, Oh, that's a new man. Oh, I think it's just a kind of like, oh, that's a new man, huh? Oh, uh, okay. Like, oh, that yeah, ones. Oh, that man. ones. You know, them jealous, <laughs> them jealous ones there. You know, the ones where they try and move. They, 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 they pretended they moved on, but they really haven't. So they're just trying to keep you on the on on the closeness. You get me? Yeah. I, I hear that. Um, <laughs> Next one. Next one's from what.nori.r.u. Uh, so what Nori are you? Uh, when is she dropping okay. the album? The album, the album's gonna be massive, so I'm gonna make sure that's down perfect before I even like release that. But it's gonna be like two EPs before an album. Okay, cool, cool. And last yeah. fan question I got is from Jarabag Sada. I hope I said it. Uh, <laughs> I hope I said it right. Simply put, <laughs> does she want to marry me? I mean, though no, you're gonna have you, you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to contend with me first, with though, Rubai. So if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna hand in uh, Nori's marriage, you have to come to me first, yeah? Because I'll get there first before you, Rubai. Just watch that. <laughs> You'll just reject everybody that comes in. Like, no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just push them out of the way. So uh, listen, she's 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 mine and only mine. You get me? So you can try it. But... <laughs> nah, <I'm joking>. Um <laughs> All right, cool Aww. and. Last thing before I let you go, um, because I do this with every artist. Uh, I'm a bit of a Twitter stalker. Okay. Okay. And with you, I know <laughs> I know you're very much a, a Twitter person. Some people, do, you know, just tweet little bits. But for you, you got some tweets out there. So I wanted to, like, get your interpretation so that have some fun. And, you know what I mean? Just, let, you know, let the audience okay. know what you mean. Right. So the first one is, tell the paps, mind their business, but get the money shot. <laughs> Okay, you want me to explain that? Yes, please. Oh, uh, when did I when did I tweet that? Uh, just recently, I think it was. Some some are from last year. Some of are recently as well. Okay, that might okay. Um, I feel like somebody reposted something about me, um, with somebody or something, and I was just like, you know what? If you're gonna get a story. <laughs> Get like get me looking fucking good or something. <laughs> I you flipped your hair when you did that. I was, I was like, okay, yeah, mind your business, Ru boy. But get that you get mm, you gotta get that shot, Ru boy. Get the lighting. Mind your business, <laughs> but get the money shot. Yes, girl. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. next next one is uh, parked car conversations are low key therapy. Oh, hundred percent, they are. I spend most of my time in the car, and it's usually with my close close friends where we're like either just gone for a drive or whatever but those are literally like therapy sessions have you ever talked to yourself in the car like trying to like you know be therapeutic to yourself or is it just like with friends in the car and 99 percent of the time i'm by myself <laughs> okay uh, do you know what i i thank you for saying that because a lot of the time if i'm stressed out if i've gone to work and there's some bullshit that's happened nine times out of ten i'm walking towards my house i'm talking to myself people across the road are looking at me thinking like he ain't even got his headphones on. What the hell? Is he is he crazy? Like, what the fuck? But it actually helps me. Like, if if there's some bullshit, I need to talk to myself to, to kind of get out of that That's funk. A, yes. Like, all, like you're basically talking to the voices in your head. And while you're talking to them, they're, like, disappearing because... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Kind of out. Like, like, decluttering the shit. Yeah. Yeah, trust. Um, yo, for real, though, no cap. 2021, my year. <laughs> And you said it with style as well. Of how funny. <laughs> that was funny because I think I said that so early on, as soon as the pandemic hit, I was like, because the year before that, I was like, yo, 2020 is my year. As soon as the pandemic hit, I was like, yo, 2021 is my year. <laughs> so if it continues, then you're going to say, yo, for real, no cap, this time around, 2022. 2022? <laughs> 
that is. <laughs> love that, love that. Okay, well, I, I, I will say that for me now, 2021 should be my year too, because obviously, like, 2020 100%. to me is a write-off almost. That's us. Yeah, that's us right, at the minute. it is. Um, <laughs> all right, next one. You know you have an amazing creative idea when you wake up and just start cleaning. Oh, yeah. Like, that's crazy. That's craziness. If yeah. you just get up and you start cleaning, like, that means you, like, because for me, when I'm focusing on an idea, I need to be doing something else at the same time. Right. So I need to be, like, multitasking right. to really hone in on that idea. And it's either I'm driving or I'm not going to get up and start driving, but I'm going to start cleaning. <laughs> now, now, see, my mom's like that. But unfortunately, my as far as multitasking, I'm not the best of it. Although I'm a little bit better but like I'd have to be focused on one thing at a time to make sure that I'm in the right places when I do. So that's something I'm working that's on. That's all men. Yeah. That's all men. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. She said all men, you know, <laughs> oh, raw. you know, you're not holding back for this shit. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm a little men. bit touched by that. Okay. 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 It's all no, good. Yeah. Women know how to multitask. Men don't. I'm being no, up. no, I, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, 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 well, yeah, like, well, well, don't say no, man. Like I said, I'm getting a bit better. I'm getting a bit all better. Men, with... I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I I remember you said this. Um, a rich a rich man without God is just a poor man with with money. Mm-hmm. A hundred and ten percent. Right. That's uh, literally what it says. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's just that's what it is. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. Um, energy's energy's like a circle. It comes back around, reciprocated. Yes. So what like, goes around comes around. What, what you give out, what is exactly what you get back. So if you if you give effort, I give effort. If you don't. I don't. It's literally energy. It's mm. just like a circle that comes like around. <laughs> it's like the other song. Okay, I got you. A uh, few more. Um, always keep your hell. Uh, always keep your head held high. You can't wear a crown with your head down. That I, I feel that yeah. that's a good one as well because you can't you can't like look at life with your head down. No, and if you're down, it's like you have to keep your head held high even when the times are hard. And rough, mm. the crown's gotta still stay on, and you gotta be the shit. And it's just like, <laughs> again, with no the hair flick. <laughs> you, you, you got no it. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. Um, <laughs> I think this is this is the most relevant to you, which I picked up. The people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. 100%. And I believe that's yes. definitely gonna be you. 100%. Thank you. That means so much to me. Thank yeah, you. That's literally my plan. My whole purpose mm. is to make sure I leave something behind that's changed the world and not left it the same mm. as it was when I left. Okay. Uh, again, a few more. Uh, don't adapt to the energy in the room. Influence the energy in the room. Oh, I love that one. I love that one because people get so intimidated when they walk into a room sometimes they feel like they have to adapt to how they are and i'm just like in what way why don't you come with your different ways so like in the music industry for example mm. there'll be like ceos in the room there'll be different types of people there'll be a producer there'll be a ceo there'll be a writer there'll be a producer there'll be a bunch of different people that have very strong opinions or influence um and people go into the room sometimes disagreeing with everything that they have to say. When being a yes man or right. woman, yeah. Yeah, being a yes man. And I'm just like, I'm not that person at um, all. I'm just like, I'm going to go in with what I believe. If something you say aligns with what I believe, then hell yeah, I'm going to agree with it. But love if it doesn't, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. And that might actually change you. Even if you're at a CEO level or at a level much higher than I am. I'm not going to be a yes man to you just because you're in this position or whatever. And that's always worked in my favor 100% of the time. And I've always gained that respect for being that way. And I feel like a lot of people should be that way. Definitely, 100%. And, and there's some situations that I've been in that, like, I can definitely 100% relate to. Especially, like, you know, being in multiple industries. I've been, I've been doing you know, the retail industry and the, you know, the media industry. And it goes like in both ways as well, as far as like, you know, what you're putting out there, you're going to make sure that you're being heard and not just being like, oh yeah, I agree with everything. Where it's like, well, actually, no, you're wrong in this section. Why don't, why don't we do this? 
Exactly. You know? Exactly. Uh, and I feel like yeah. that comes back to the whole um, BLM movement and all of that stuff as well, because it's just like, don't adapt to what everybody else is saying or what's been said or whatever. Go into that room and actually make a change and, you know, influence the room into something better than what it is. Exactly. No, exactly mm-hmm. that. And last one, very last one. Your job title is not your purpose. And what you are good at does not mean that's all you can do. And I love that one. Uh, yes, it's so true. It's like, like my job title, cool, it's music. But my whole logo is, is it's bigger than music, which mm. is literally my whole purpose, meaning... I can be good at singing. I can be good at dancing, for example. I could be good at painting. It's just like, but I'm a musician. It doesn't, mm. that doesn't box me into just being a musician or whatever. It's my whole purpose is so much bigger than that. That's just my platform. And that's my love. It's my first love. It's like your job title and, you know, what you're good at does not limit you to just doing that. Mm. Uh, I hear you like you can't be contained in one box you have to be outside the box at all times to make yourself like you know you can creatively do other things as well so you're not just like sticking to one lane where knowing there's so many other opportunities you can put yourself into so that's what I'm learning to do as well I've got a podcast outside of this that I'm doing at the moment as well so that's another way I'm creatively you know putting myself out there so yeah I'm glad you mentioned that no that's amazing and that's what you exactly what you should be doing and that's fine. That's I'm fine. Back. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's exactly what you should be doing. A hundred percent. I hear you. I hear you. And then last thing as well, because it just came in my head. Yeah, are you closer to getting that dream collaboration with Drake? Ah, oh, uh, <laughs> that's so funny that I mentioned that. Uh, yes, I'm getting a step closer. One hundred percent. Love that. A hundred and like, yes, like I'm gonna get it. Oof. I'm just telling you now, I'm going to get it. <laughs> All right, cool. We you, you, we said it here. It's going to happen. And we know where you heard it first, for sure. Like, I cannot wait for that to happen. Like, honestly. <laughs> no, it's going to be it's gonna be more than one collaboration. And I'm very sure of it. Is there, is, sure. there, is there other ones that you're feeling that you know you're going to get that you can tell me? Other collaborations? Yeah. Like, um... that, that you want, that you know you're going to get in your head. Chris Brown. Okay. For sure. I need a, coll- a collab with Chris Brown. Um, those are the two right now that I would say, Ooh. yes. Like, those are the two I will make sure I make happen. <laughs> Speaking of which, like, has, has, I, I don't know if this has happened. Has there, ever, has there ever been a versus between Drake and Chris Brown? No. No. That needs to happen, you know, because I re- I reckon that's going to be a massive catalog on both ends. Like, who would, who do, no, who would win, who would win, is... who would win in the versus battle between them two? If we're oh, talking like catalog, it. it's tough, isn't it? That's a tough one. That's <laughs> it good. Is. That it's a tough one. That needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. I can't even answer that. Yeah. No, neither can I, because I think. You, you you know yeah you're going back as far as like when I first known of Chris Brown that was like 2006 when he first came out and in similar times to Drake as well so you got nearly 14 yeah. years of catalog wow that's and a lot such dopeness. like yeah still in their prime I feel like they're still in their prime no they're 100 percent like they've got loads of time left on their hands so they're they're not like old, old school timers now they're still doing yeah. it you get me no, they're nah. just like so at the top of like what they're doing. It's just crazy and so inspiring. I love it. No, nah, definitely. Love it. Well, Nori, I really, really want to thank you for chatting with me on here. Uh, I know that yeah. I, I know you're a busy woman and that, but I, 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 <laughs> I was so excited to come chat to you today, man. Seriously. Oh, uh, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. A hundred percent. Yeah, and Appreciate I knew that. It. I knew that. Like you know, we've been trying to get this set up for a while, and you know, we got there in the end. So like you know, I yes. I, I know there's so much that you got to do, but you know, I know you're. I know you got more famous shit to do, so I ain't gonna hold you up much longer now. Uh, yeah. If you can tell our audience whether they can catch you on all the socials, tell them right here. The floor is yours. Yes, please um, catch me on Instagram at Nori N O U R I. My YouTube, Nori Official, where all my videos and everything are. And Spotify, at Nori, 
Apple Music at Nori, all DSPs at Nori. <laughs> now, all of that, all of that. Like I, like I said, the first time I met you, you're a bundle of joy and you're still a bundle of joy. Aww. So I, I, you know, I really do miss you. And um, when flights miss lift, I, oh man, you get me there. Um, yeah, when flights lift, like, you know, please come back to London and, you know, like I'll come visit you and we can, you know, I can show you some sites that you may not have seen yet, you know, to get, give you a tour guide, you know? I'm really going to hold you to that because that would honestly be so amazing. And I'm definitely coming back 100%. All right, cool. Well, we'll chat in the DMs and we'll sort something out, yeah, for when you come back, yeah? For sure. All right. 100%. This is Jay yes. Bills, Media Spotlight UK with the beautiful Kurdish Nori, reunited once again with, with her bubbly flavours. Make sure you check up her new single, Do You Mind? Uh, EP in the works, the merch is out. Make sure you go cop that as well. And there's more to come, so make sure you lock into Nori. And I'm out. Peace. <laughs>